We are in Parashat Naso, and we're going to be reading from Kedushat Levi Yitzchak, the teachings of Levi Yitzchak from Mardichov. And uh, we are very lucky that every day here in Israel we get blessed by Kohanim. In uh, the diaspora, they only get it a uh, couple times a year on Sukkot, on, uh, on uh, Pesach, or Shavuot. We get it every day. So even though we still don't uh, have uh, the real Bet Migdash with the real Birkat Kohanim over there, but we still here in Israel are lucky to experience Birkat Kohanim every day. And uh, in this week's parasha, we are reading about the Birkat Kohanim, the actual bracha, Vaidaber Hashem el Aaron vel Banav lemor, Kote Bachud Bnei Israel, Mor lem, Verecha Hashem Vishmerecha, and so forth. So we <coughs> find it in this week's parasha. And the blessing goes exactly like I just said, Vaidaber Hashem el Moshe lemor, el Aaron. Hashem speaks to Aaron. It's one of the places where we see that uh, Hashem actually spoke also to Aaron. Not only to Moshe Rabbeinu. Aaron was also a great prophet. And he speaks to Aaron and he says to, to Aaron and his sons in order, so you will bless the nation of Israel. And then he says, Emor lahem, tell them. And then of course comes the blessing, Hashem v'yishmarecha. And so forth. Hakla lukach. This is the rule. Dehine abal Shem Tov haya mochiach tamid et haolam b'zeh ha-pasuk Hashem tzilcha. The Baal Shem Tov, the Holy Baal Shem Tov, constantly used to prove the world based on the, on the verse that it says Hashem tzilcha. Hashem is your shadow. Amen. What does it mean that Hashem is your shadow? If I now move my hand then my shadow on the ground will move my hand too. Whatever movement I will do, then the shadow will do. So, this is basically what the, the Bar Shem Dov is saying. The Hainu, Kmo Sheatzel Ose Ma Sheadam Ose, Kacha Baruch, Kacha Baruch, Baruch Hu. Kiv Yachol Ose, Ma Sheadam Ose. The same way that my shadow does, does what I do, the exact same way, that's what Hashem does, uh, according to what I do. Very simple. ולכך, and therefore, צריך האדם לעשות מצוות וליתן צדקה ולרחם על עניים. Therefore, very simple, because a person has to do מצוות all day long. He has to give charity, to have mercy on, on poor people. כדי שיעשה הבורא ברוך הוא גם כן עם עוד טובות. The same way that Hashem will do the same thing with me. I do מצוות, Hashem will do מצווה with me. I will give uh, charity, to, Hashem will give charity to me. I will have mercy on poor people, Hashem will have mercy on me, very simple. And this is just three examples uh, that he's saying, anything you'll do, you'll be honest, Hashem will be fair with you, you'll be, you'll be straight with uh, everybody, uh, the world will be straight with you, that's how it works. This is what it means when David HaMelech, David, King David says, Hashem Tzilcha al Yad this can be found in chapter 23. We say it very often during Kiddush and many other occasions, so he says, Hashem is your shadow. Not only that, I mean, I, this is how the Baal Shem Tov explains it. I explained it many times that uh, the way how I see it is that the world is, has a reflection. And whatever you will do in the world, then it will reflect by, right back at you. So you will do a certain action and uh, you will bring on yourself a reaction. It's very simple. <clears throat> this midah, this attribute that we just mentioned, is called in the holy language ko. And it's written with a kaf and a hay. Where do we find this ko, this word ko? Here in Birkat Kohanim. This is now ko can be uh, uh, translated as, as th this is how. But nevertheless, here he says that this uh, uh, midah, that, uh, that Hashem is your shadow, is called ko. 
כי פירוש המילה של כה היא כך. The explanation of the word כה is like that, כך, in Hebrew. פירוש, כמו שהוא עושה, כך גם הבורא ברוך הוא עושה. The same way that Hashem does, that's how... Uh, sorry, the same way that you do, that's how Hashem does. That's how he explains it, very simple. וזה ידוע שהבורא ברוך הוא רוצה להטיב לעמו ישראל. This is very obvious and clear that we know that the master of the universe, he just wants to uh, do good to us. The word that he's using is להטיב. להטיב is kind of like the verb of being good. To become good, to do good. Like a good father, he wants to support, he wants to sustain, he wants to provide. Kadosh Baruch Hu has only an agenda to do good with me. Some people think that Kadosh Baruch Hu is sitting in Shemaim and he's looking to torture me. But it's not the truth. Shem just wants to do good with me. Not only me, everybody. Ki yoter mima shaegel rotze linok, para rotza lanik. There's a famous saying by our sages, as much as the calf wants to, to drink from his mother, the mother wants to breastfeed the calf more than the calf wants to drink. This is a famous saying from, from the Talmud. וצריך האדם כשעומד להתפלל לפני הבורא ברוך הוא, כל תפילת שמונה עשרה, and a person before he stands in front of Hashem, we pray three times a day. We actually pray three, five times a day, because we pray שחרית מנחה אין ערבית. We have to say another prayer right now that is called קריאת שמע למיטה. And we have to also wash for bread and to say ברכת המזון. This is another prayer, to do it every day. Like that everybody, that most people don't want to do it for whatever reason, because people are lazy and they don't want to wash their hands and say a blessing that takes exactly seven and a half minutes. To be on uh, Facebook for three hours, that's no problem. But to say Birkat Amazon, to take seven minutes, that's uh, a big deal. Needless to say that this is the original and the only bracha, the only prayer we have from the Torah, that we are obligated from the Torah to, to pray. ואכלת וסבעת וברכת, every day you eat, means ואכלת you eat, וסבעת, and you should be full, וברכת, so you should give a blessing. I don't know people that they eat uh, and they don't get full, so might as well get, uh, get this blessing. Nevertheless, we pray a lot every day, and before we pray the, the main part of the prayer, which is called תפילת שמונה עשרה, the 18th blessing, Nevertheless, it says before a person stands in front of his master, when we pray Tfilat Shmona Yisre, the, the, some call it Tfilat Shmona Yisre because there's 18, 18 blesses. Some will refer to it as Tfilat Amida, the, the standing up prayer. Some will call it Tfilat Alachash, the whispering prayer. There's different ways, but nevertheless, this is the peak of the prayer. And before a person stands in front of Hashem, he has to understand he's standing in front of Hashem. כשאדם עומד להתפלל לפני הבורא ברוך הוא תפילות שמונה עשרה, או שאר דברי תחנונים, not, not only that, even though that's considered the peak of the prayer, but any type of prayer that you're about to say, צריך להתפלל רק שיהיה לבורא ברוך הוא תענוג מזה. My desire and wish should be that Hashem should have satisfaction for my prayer. Not to pray to Hashem because I need something. Don't worry, Hashem knows exactly what you need. He's, uh, he has a lot of agents down here. He knows exactly what's going on in your bank account. Hashem has access to your bank account. He knows money, how much money you have and how much money you don't have. And he knows your marital status. He's connected to the computer of the social services and Bituach Lumi. He knows if you're married or not. And he knows your, situ your physical situation, if you're sick or healthy. So technically, technically, what do I need to pray for? Hashem knows, if, if I need money, Hashem knows that. And if He wants to give it to me, He will give it to me one way or another. And if I'm, I need to get married or I need to be healthy, Hashem knows that. He knows, He, he, got, he gets His report. Of course, it doesn't mean that I don't have to pray, but my agenda when I stand in front of Hashem to pray, any type of a prayer, is only to cause Him happiness and for Him to have pleasure. He doesn't need me to whine, and I need this and I need that, and I need this and I need that. Besides the fact that most people, when they pray, it's an empty prayer. It's just... It's not really a prayer. You know when you pray, really? When there's a problem. When there's, a, when there's an issue. Then you finally pray. But when things are okay, needless to say, when things are good, you don't really pray. Most people, when they say a blessing, when they eat something, 
don't, don't, even, don't even understand what they say. I always tell to my kids, if I didn't hear you, then Hashem didn't hear you. If I didn't understand you, how would Hashem understand you? Children with the That's not a bracha. Baruch, Ata, Hashem, Okeinu Melech HaOlam. Take 18 seconds out of your life to concentrate on the words that you're saying, to have some, uh, some uh, intention, some kavanah behind what you're saying. So most people, again, I'm not here trying to put anybody down, I'm trying to make a point. And most people, when it comes to prayer, when they say Birkat Amazon, all it sounds like whispering. They say it in the speed of an F-16 flying Mach 700,000. I don't know how you say Birkat Amazon. You know, according to Allah, if you didn't pronounce the words and you didn't say it loud enough that somebody next to you can hear and you didn't understand what you're saying, you didn't say the bracha. You have to say it again. There are certain prayers that, uh, that you have to repeat if it wasn't said the right way, like Shema Yisrael, Birkat Amazon. But nevertheless, <coughs> my agenda when I pray is to cause happiness to Hashem. When I see my kid does something very special, if I see my kid initiates something unique, it gives me a lot of pleasure. Suddenly I see yeah, my kid, yesterday we were eating, I don't have high expectations, but my seven-year-old takes a prayer book and he starts reading the entire Birkat Amazon. Took him like 25 minutes. Every word. Baruch Ata. Ha. He just now is learning how to read. So every word takes about 17 seconds. So he read that for maybe half an hour. And he, with all of his uh, excitement, and he kept asking, do I say this, do I say that? He didn't give up. That causes a nachat. You see that? It gives you satisfaction eh? and happiness. That's exactly with Hashem. He sees you taking your prayer serious. He gets satisfaction. That's what will cause him to want to give you that money that you need, or that extra job, or that extra uh, push, or the health, wealth, whatever it is. Hashem, eh, I, I, I can relate to that as a father. When my kids bother me and they nag, I want the, I want the, I want the, already, leave me alone. Stop bothering me. When they don't say anything, when they just come and say anything short and to the point, that's when I want to give them something. And my kid will come home with a great report or come as the student of the week or I'll get a call from the teacher saying your kid was amazing, he's so special, he's this, he's that. Then I will call him and say, here, I have something for you. I have a present for you. Whatever it is. I know what he likes. He doesn't need to tell me what he likes. I know the, the candy he likes. I know which flavor ice cream he likes. I know that. He doesn't need to tell me. So, but when he comes, I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this. I don't want to. I want to give it to you. You said that already. We have a rule in my house that I tell my kids since they're young kids. The more you say, the less you get. Because sometimes a kid comes, I want that, I want that, I want that, they repeat it 700 times. And my rule is, the more you will say it, the less chances you have to get it. So I relate with how Hashem operates, and Hashem says, I don't need you to ask for anything. I know everything. I am the master of the universe. By the way, I have created the world. I know what you need. Hashem wants us to give Him satisfaction and nachat, and when you do that, that's when Hashem pours blessings on you. So He says here, before a person starts praying, you have to understand any type of prayer that all you need to care about is to cause pleasure to the Kadosh Baruch that you prayed so nice. As it says in the Mishnah, if you have learned Torah, and a lot, don't hold for you some type of, a, a, like as if you did some great achievement, because that's what you were created for. This can be found in Tractate Avot. <clears throat> so what if you sat down and learned a lot of Torah? <laughs> Who gave you a tuchus to sit on? And who gave you the chair to sit on? Who gave you the mouth to talk and, to, and your eyes to see? You were created to learn the Torah. Don't hold yourself like as if you did a favor to the universe. Perush, what is the meaning? The simple explanation from this Mishnah is that every action that you do is only to cause satisfaction and happiness to the Kadosh Baruch Hu. That's what, that's what you need to care about. Is Hashem happy with my action? Or Hashem is not happy with my action. 
אזי נקרא מקבל. When a person prays for himself, then he is called a receiver. וכשאדם רוצה לקבל דבר אוחז הגב יד לארץ, ותוך יד למעלה, when a person really wants to receive something, then what does he do? He turns his hand to the ground. This is a very nice term to say. He says here, אוחז הגב יד לארץ. This is the gav of the yad. Gav, gav is a back. So he takes the back of the hand and he turns it down. והתוך יד למעלה. תוך is the inside, and the yad is a hand, תוך יד למעלה. So he, when a person wants to get something, you see many people, פותח את ידיך, they open their hands and the gav, the back goes to the ground and the front goes to the top. And this relates to gava? No, no, this is when a person wants I'm to saying, receive something. Like by turning the, the gav, the back, the hand. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. Rejecting gava. 100%. אבל כשאדם מתפלל רק שיהיה לבורא ברוך הוא תענוג מזה, אז זה נקרא משפיע. When a person prays for his needs, he is called a receiver. Which okay, that's, uh, that's okay, I'm not saying it's bad. But, when a person prays only for the sake of Hashem to have תענוג, to have satisfaction and happiness, you know how that person is called? A giver, a משפיע. שהוא משפיע כביכול ברוך הוא. He gives to the, to the Kadosh ברוך הוא. What does he give to Hashem? He gives to the Kadosh ברוך הוא happiness and satisfaction. אנחת. He gives to the Kadosh ברוך הוא. והמשפיע אוחז גב יד למעלה ותוך היד למטה. And the giver is the other way around. Right? How does the Kohanim put their hands when they bless? They don't go like that. They go like that. So the giver... Tape turns the hands upside down, that the front, the in part, is facing down, and the back is facing up. How do the Kohanim bless? They spread their hands, it's called Nesiat Kapayim. Nesia is to lift up, and Kapayim, this is my Kapayim. That's why when we clap, it's called Mechiat Kapayim, because this is Kaf Yad, two Kafs is Kapayim. Hebrew is very, very... Very deep. Dahainu shochzim gav yadehem keneged pnehem. That they're holding the back of their hands facing their face. They don't go like that when they pray, when the Kohanim bless us, they go like that. I know it's not hard to know because you're under the talis, you don't see what's going on there. And they're under the talit, you don't see what's going on there. But the Kohanim, they spread their fingers like that and they, they lift up their hands. They're blessing the nation. כמו מי שירצה להשפיע, like a giver, not like a receiver, they're not standing like that, they're standing like this, they want to give. וזה פירוש הפסוק, כה תברכו את בני ישראל, and that's why the verse says, כה תברכו את בני ישראל, this is how you should bless the nation of Israel, meaning, דהיינו שיברכו את ישראל כדי שיהיה לבורא ברוך הוא תענוג מזה. Bless the master of the, bless the nation of Israel, so the master of the universe should have pleasure from that. ותהיו אתם משפיעים כביכול מהבורא ברוך הוא. And you should become givers that the energy should flow from Hashem through you into the nation. ואחר כך הבורא ברוך הוא ישפיע לכם. And after that the Kadosh ברוך הוא will give you whatever you need. כל טובות וברכות על ישראל. All the goodness and kindness and blessings on the entire nation of Israel. כמו שאמרנו, as we said, שזה המידה נקרא כה, that this attribute is called כה. כה, אז השם says, I want to give you, I want to give you everything. כמו שישראל עושים כביכול הבורא ברוך הוא, the same way that the nation of Israel do for Hashem, הוא גם כן עושה ומשפיע לעמו ישראל. He does the same thing to the Kadosh ברוך הוא. טובות וברכות, חיים ושלום. Good, kindness, peace, health, and everything else that you need. Very, very, very simple, very straight and to the point, that the Kadosh ברוך הוא tells the Kohanim, I want you to do a certain action, and with that action, I will do the exact same thing to you and the rest of the nation of Israel. So what do we see from this? That first of all, that when I pray, I want to become a giver, not a receiver. I don't know if you uh, notice, a lot of people can come and say, listen, but I'm not a Kohen. I'm not a priest. But we just read two days ago in the Ten Commandments, 
the first part before the Ten Commandments, what does it say? We got another commandment. And it says, Vaitim li mamlechet koanim ve goi kadosh. You should be from a nation of priests and a holy, a holy nation. Which means that we also have the ability. We are also a koanim. We're all koanim. So the point to take from that is very, very simple. Whatever you want, you have to do yourself. Don't wait for, for, for something to happen to you. Hashem says, whatever you want to, to, to shine on you, you, do, you do the same thing. Needless to say that when I pray, my agenda is to be a, a giver, not a receiver. When I come to shul, it's not because I need something and I need to pray for parnasa and, and sustenance and my livelihood and my health and this and that and this deal to go through and that pray thing to, to, to find a solution. When you're praying like that, you are a, a receiver. You're coming like, sorry, like a beggar to Hashem. I need, I need, I need, I need. I can tell you, I don't know, I can't speak in the name of Hashem. I can, tell, I can speak as a name, in the name of my own self as a father, but like I don't. When my kids nag me, I don't want to give them. I, I, and when they just do what they need to do, I shower them with love and, and presents and everything they want. So the same way, that's how we have to relate with Hashem. We are all a nation of priests. And we have to take from it three very powerful points. A, we have to, whatever we want to receive, we have to just do it ourselves. You want to receive kindness? Do kindness. You want to receive love? Give love. You want to receive uh, 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 respect? Give respect. That's very simple. Second of all, and this works between me and any other person, between me and Hashem. Hashem is a shadow. Whatever you do, Hashem will do, will follow. The next is when I pray, my agenda should be to make, to cause happiness to Hashem, not, not, not to, to ask for anything. That's what I need to relate with before I pray. Will my, will my Father in Heaven has, will have nachat for me when I go 60, 50 million uh, miles per hour speed? Or will I say it nice and calm and relaxed? So again, going back to the same example I gave, that yesterday one son uh, said Birkat Amazon within two and a half minutes. And then I was like, woof, you know, I never seen even lips move so fast. And the other son sat for half an hour and read one word after the other. So I can tell you that the younger one who read it for one word after the other with all his attention and being focused and, and excitement gave me a lot of pleasure. And the one who zoomed through it, I was like, listen, what well, I'm, I'm expecting from you much more. This is not a prayer. This is just to go out of uh, your, your uh, obligation. To say, here, I did it. You didn't do it with love. You didn't do it with intention. You didn't do it with excitement. Sorry to tell you. Didn't get much nachat here. So our, my agenda is to cause Hashem nachat. And needless to say that I uh, uh, have to understand that I'm also, I might not be Mr. Cohen, but I'm also uh, 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 from a nation of priests. I'm a nation of that need to give. Hashem, Hashem is a giver. I need to give to give to the world, to shine to the world. And don't be afraid that you, if you're going to give a little bit too much, that you're going to lack anything. I have to constantly be a giver because the more you give, the more you receive. But that's what Hashem. I'm not, I don't, I'm not doing it because I want to receive. I'm doing it because that's what Hashem wants. And I constantly have to think: What is Hashem's opinion right now. What does Hashem want me to do right now in this situation? What does Hashem want me to do in this situation? And therefore, I end up giving, becoming a giver and not a receiver. And needless to say that you do all that, he finalizes the ma'amar by saying, when you do this, Kadosh the Kadosh Baruch does the same thing. He gives to his nation only good and kindness, brachot, blessing, chaim, life, we all need life. And we also know that when the Torah says, talks about life, it's also referring to parnasa for livelihood, shalom and peace. And that's what we need. As Allah Hashem, we should merit to reach the level of, that we're causing Hashem a lot of nachat, that we are becoming a givers, and that we should be blessed with all the goods and kindness that Hashem can bestow on us.